Rob, what is our second main topic? Today? Well, our second main topic comes to us from Jeremy Wig. Hey, John and crew. So this weekend, the Avatar re-release came in fifth place at the weekend box office. What's really interesting is that even though it's been out just as long as Don't Worry Darling, it actually made more money than it. What does that say to you about Avatar's ongoing popularity? And does it tell us anything about how well Avatar 2 may do? All right. Thanks a lot for writing that in, Jeremy. And yeah, Avatar, the re-release, still in the top five at the box office and has now officially crossed the first film in cinematic history to cross the $2.9 billion mark. I gave it some of that money last yesterday. <laughs> and I think Rob's given it some of its money. I gave that some of its money. I mean, and now is less than $100 million away after another couple of re-releases. It'll become the first film to cross $3 billion, but still, it has crossed the $2.9 billion mark, which is just mind-boggling. Like, it's absolutely mind-boggling because we still consider a film that crosses like $100 million to be like, oh, hey, good for it. And we're talking almost... Three billion, closing in on three billion. It's crazy. But what's really more interesting than that, and you kind of allude to this, Jeremy, in your message, is that when you look at how it is comparing right now to other films that have been out for two or three weeks, mm -hmm. Avatar is actually the number one film. Take a look at this. So in the last couple of weeks since its re-release, Avatar Worldwide has made $58 million as a re-release. It released at the same time as Don't Worry Darling. Or sorry, it released uh, one week before, I think, or at the same time one week before, but Don't Worry Darling has made $54.7 worldwide. So Avatar has actually made more money than this brand new, what was early on considered to be maybe an Oscar kind of film, be that The Woman King, which is getting huge reviews, lauded and all that kind of stuff. It's made 50.1. Barbarian, which everybody loves, 34.8. Avatar is actually outpacing Every single movie that has been out the last three weeks uh, at the box office, with the exception of Smile, because Smile just came out this weekend. It's at 22 million. So it's ahead of Smile, but Smile's only been out one week. Right. So you, you can't compare that. But this is incredible, an incredible showing for a re-release of a film. Rob, we've talked about this before. What does this then kind of suggest to us about if people are running out just $58 million worth of people just running out to see an old re-release? What does that tell us about the upcoming Avatar 2? I'll tell you what it says. It's going to be huge. It's going to be absolutely huge. I still do not believe it's going to hit Avatar 1 numbers. I still don't think it's going to cross 2 billion. I, I, I don't. I hope it does. That'd be great if it did. But it's going to be massive. Anyway, Rob, you're seeing these numbers. What jumps out to you the most? I think the thing that strikes me the most is people still want to feel awe and wonder in the movie theater. And I think that Avatar always provided that. Uh, Jonathan, you could speak to it. Seeing it in the theater again yesterday, how'd you feel about it? Again, there were there were literally like, as I sat there, I, I was just thinking like, I don't I don't remember a lot of these details. Well, that's there was a lot. Yeah. I, there was more I forgot about it than I remembered. And also, I did get to see it in in 3D IMAX. And typically, I'm not a fan of 3D, but it didn't darken it. Maybe a shade. It looked incredible. I, I honestly, I thought, oh, I'm just taking one of my kids to see it. I would be bored. I literally was in, like because, right back in it. John, people forget how transporting this movie really is. Yeah. And I think when, when and again, you can't bet against James Cameron. Good Canadian he knows, kid, by the way. Uh, he, he's a good Canadian, former truck driver, for, former Canadian truck driver. Um, you can't, that's why when our community poo poos Avatar, and a lot of people do, <laughs> I'm like, you people do not get what the magic of cinema can do. And in terms of when I say magic of cinema, it's the way he actually constructs a scene using the kind of coverage. It's not just his scripts. And oh, yeah, look at it, all of his movies. He, uh, he's uh, a master uh, at that. He's a master. And when you go see a movie like Avatar, you forget, if you just think about it, how transporting, like Jonathan just said, it really is. There's so much detail in every frame, so much verisimilitude, so much reality. And I think people crave that. That's why you go to the movies. That's why we love the Marvel Cinematic Universe, because... They did the same thing with superheroes. I mean, that's why we love the original Star Wars. Jaws coming back to the theater. E.T. All of these movies have a sense of wonder, and they transport audiences to places where audiences aren't used to going. Right. You know, I just want to point out that when we first reported that they were re-releasing this movie, I myself was like, why? 
but it turns out to be a great move. I mean, I mean, they picked the right weekend to release it, and it's still a little bit for, uh, be, before Avatar 2. It'll get everyone who hasn't watched Avatar in the theater to know what, what it's about. And it, I think it's just going to work out well for there's, Avatar there's 2. There's plenty of, of people in the new generation. That yeah, yeah, yeah. That. That's what I think. So at first I thought, why are they doing this? I was like, is it just to get the billion? No, I think it's really going to end up helping Avatar 2. Well, here's like the brilliance. This is the brilliance of it. Studios pay, exhibitors pay, distributors pay tens and 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 tens, sometimes in the hundreds, but it's very, very rarely that much, but tens of millions of dollars to advertise their movie. Disney found a way to go, huh, how can we advertise Avatar 2 <laughs> and make money doing it? That's what they did. This is an Avatar 2 commercial. Yeah, it is. But instead of spending $60 million on an advertising campaign, they're making $60 million. Whoa. So brilliant. That Bravo. Look ahead, that look ahead at the end, I, I'm sold. It was fantastic. I'm seeing, yeah, I'm seeing it. That's what it did. Yep. Dude, it, those end sequences underwater. Yeah. Anyway, guys. Question is for you. What stands out to you most about this? The fact that the re-release after a couple of weeks is actually outpacing all the other movies that have come out. The fact that it's the first film ever to cross $2.9 billion at the box office. How do you think the next one's going to do? Whatever your thoughts are, jump down to the comment section below and leave those thoughts there. Guys, we want to take a second to thank the sponsor of this video, me undies. Now guys, I admit for all my life, I have been a low quality underwear wearing kind of guy. I always just got the cheapest pack of underwear I could find because I never really thought about it. Well, that all changed when I started wearing me undies. They are simply the softest and most comfortable underwear I have ever owned and I will never go back. And guys, spooky season is here and so is the latest Halloween collection by me undies. Warning though, it's scary soft. Me undies is back with a new limited edition prints like Jack Attack, Nobody Like You, and Spell It Out. So go on and grab undies, socks, bralettes, and more made from their feels like you have nothing on micromodal fabric. And if you need a last minute costume, be lazy and transform into a spooky skeleton with their loungewear set, Lazy Bones. Guys, the scary soft hype is real. If you're not impressed with me undies, your first pair is on us. That's a promise. To get 20% off your first order and free standard shipping on US orders, go to meundies.com slash campia. That's meundies.com slash campia.